are you? I'm Zita, your guiding luminary. Thank you for joining us today. I am happy to have you. I have a special guest, Sandra McGillis. She, like I, is a nice little YouTube presenter and she is also an empath and a healer. So we had met a little while ago and we thought, wow, we get along so well. It'd be so nice to do a video together and to share what we can help, how we can help you and what motivates us to do what we do. So welcome, Sandra. Well, hello, and thank you for having me, and welcome to Keeping It Spiritually Simple, and my special guest is Rita Bansinski. <laughs> you didn't expect that, did you? Because we are kind of doing like a dual um, interview with each other, and we're both going to post out, and so instead of messing up on everything, we're just introducing each other. So yes, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. It's my pleasure to have you and have another soul sister to share this journey, which is quite challenging as, at the very least, as we all know, the, the world has gone to shambles sometimes, but we try to pick things up and move things forward. So how, how have you been? How, how are you doing? I've been doing okay. You know, we, you, you said something that's really important. You know, the world's gone shambles. The world has been in shambles. We're just waking up to realize that the, the systems just aren't working anymore and the awareness to the programming of the systems, which is a shock to our own physical system to realize that, holy moly, we've been controlled. Um, so, you know, really for me, um, I just bob and weave the best I can and get as much air as I can and remind myself to take in some air. And, um, you know, hopefully some of that air has some shelf life for when I'm not when I'm shallow breathing. But, you know, it's, it's been an interesting number of years. Um, I personally have been waiting for a lot of this to occur. Um, I, I think in 2000, you know, 17, 18, I knew something was coming, but I just didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. And again, um, spirit won't let me get too far ahead of myself. So, yeah. you know, you got to just sort of lay in waiting so to speak but not with the anticipation of being trampled do you know what i mean yes yeah i find that for myself i've had because i live in montreal canada and it's really cold here and it's barely warm enough to walk around without a coat still i find it really hard because going for a walk or to meditate or to ground yourself it's still not easy but that's something that works for me and I encourage that a lot to my clients. And if we can't ground, I suggest my clients to hug some trees. And to make it fun, what I've done is I give them an objective to hug three to five trees and give them names. <laughs> and people really enjoy doing that. And that's a way for people to calm down because I've noticed that there's this anxiety level uh, going around and it's all this energy that's pimped up. So people are lost, they don't know what to do. So I try to help them as a life coach by providing them tools and suggestions, either take an Epsom bath, meditate, go for a walk, or go see some friends, whatever that works for them, just to bring down the anxiety level. And you had a beautiful video you did last week we, where you specifically addressed the anxiety that you've been feeling and that, that's that been coming around with your, um, your, your, your clients as well. Perhaps you can mm -hmm. share a little bit about that. Yeah, well, you know, I, I, I'm not one to, um... I mean, I've always had like, I'll get nervous or embarrassed or turn red, those kind of like mild anxiety things, or maybe not feeling like I fit into a group, but I learned that that was empathic. That was my way of going, coming in and filtering through the energy of where I belonged in the room. And then about a year ago, um, not even, uh, I started waking up to not being able to breathe, heart palpitations, feeling really hot, not knowing what was going on. And wondering, you know, did I hide stress somewhere? What, what, was, what was happening? And going downstairs to a cooler area, back upstairs to my room, back and forth. And uh, then hearing things and then seeing things. So this went on in different, um, how do I want to say it? Some could be a level seven, some could have been a level 10, some could have been a level four anxiety, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I went through periods of doing that until I really started asking spirit, what is happening here? And basically they were saying that higher frequencies of energies were being done and worked upon while I was supposed to be in sleep state. 
but for whatever reason, I was coming out of it. And then I'm left with this, uh, yes. like, you know, what is going on? And so I accepted that answer, but then they showed me the answer also, because then all of a sudden I would be laying still or maybe going to prop myself up, lay down for a meditation with a blindfold on. I could feel um, like, like I wasn't quite in my body, like, and it was this, or I would be laying you know, the head at the headboard, but my body felt like it was doing this. Oh, like, 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 a, like arms on a clock, like it was moving and I could feel it. And, you know, I've gone through off and on for years, you know, little dizzy spells. So sometimes I used to just grab onto something really like, oh no, but I learned that it, that was happening internally. I physically wasn't going to fall down. So I knew to breathe through it and just allow this energy, because the more I was able to allow it, I didn't create resistance, which made it a hyper um, anxiety level mm -hmm. where it's like, I couldn't function. And so I do know that some people are also going through this during the day. And a lot of these nervous system anxieties are coming from a lot of different directions. And some of us are predispositioned to be a lot more sensitive than others, you yes. know, in that, that scale. And so, you know, a lot of our younger folk who can speak to the other side or have different energies coming through them might not understand it and they don't have support systems. So they shut it down and they have a lot of anxiety. Yes. There's a lot of medication going on between our younger generations. There's a lot in our older generations as well. But if we could just stop, drop, sit, connect with our breath and ask ourselves, you know, I do not consent first off and then ask ourselves, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> very bad allergy season here right now. Hold on. Um, ask ourselves to bring in the God source yes. and align with that. <clears throat> excuse me, I'm so sorry and allow ourselves to just be in that space where we have control over our physical, mental, emotional, etheric body. Yes. Period. We have that control. We, we, we have that power to have that control is really what I'm trying to say. Yeah. We don't need to run to the brown bottles or, and I mean, any bottle now that they just said that my spirit just said any bottle, yeah. any bottle it could be like this. It could be poured in your hand and take it. You know, we're always looking for that quick fix because we've been programmed in the last 30, 40, 50 years that that's the way to go. Yeah. And that's the solution. There's, there's a pill for every diagnosis. And if there isn't a diagnosis yet, start on the pills. Now we'll figure out a diagnosis later oh, or they will create one. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, exactly. One thing I've noticed is I have a lot of clients who come to me, they, they are very anxious. And when we know anxiety is based because we're looking into the future to see what the future will hold and bring for us, whereas depression is more of a past kind of issue. Mm -hmm. So what I've been counseling my clients is to try to focus on the present. And by giving them some tools to relax them and to live in the moment, um, because I have a lot of people who are going through career transitions or looking to semi-retire, retire, or starting their business. So they're going through that leap of faith to do something new. And there's this anxiety that's developing with them. Right. So one of the things I do is I do read Oracle cards as well to help guide them in what to do now and not so much for the future. But even though they come with the, come to see me with the intent of knowing what to do in the future. And it's funny, the last two or three months, the readings I've been getting for virtually, I'd say a good 80% of my clients is not telling them what to do in the future, but what to do with their now and what's been in the past that keeps coming into the now and they, they keep pushing it away. So they don't always want to hear what I'm telling them because they realize there's work to do that they have to do and that there isn't like rainbows and unicorns waiting for them tomorrow, that they need to work on some of the issues that has been plaguing them from this life and perhaps other lives that they haven't resolved. 
uh, unresolved conflicts with parents or siblings or jobs or partners or even work. And a lot of that is from the past. So I could see sometimes the disappointment in their eyes that like, I'm not going to tell them they're getting married tomorrow. They're going to have a bag of gold at the end of the rainbow. And I tell them, you know, they got to watch their, their approach to money and finances and their loved ones. And they have to resolve things they had with their parents. But once they understand that resolving those past issues will make their day today better, although there's that shadow work they have to do, which brings them into a difficult place because they finally have to face the challenges they came here to do right because yes. earth is a school so once they have that grasped a little better they work on the issue i work with them usually over a few sessions to guide them with the goal that every session there's a specific target that they have to address and when i meet with them i draw a card for them and then we focus on that and whether or not they want to hear it, this is what the spirit or the universe is trying to tell them and to share with them that they need to focus. And it's amazing how every time I do that for a client reading or a session, it becomes topic of this, the actual meeting and it resolves so many of their issues and that I give them homework and we see each other again. So it's really, it's been a very interesting three months. I found in 2021, it was more about love relationships, staying calm and stuff like that. But now it's, everything's been going into the past. So it seems like we need to resolve the past so we can go into this new earth. And mm -hmm. people are resisting that change. H have you had that experience in your own energy healing? Sure, practice? sure. Yeah. Um, I, I, I understand it a lot because I think I've walked it myself. Spirit has had me come in and, and sort of experience a lot of things that I'm going to be able to help others overcome or at least step properly on the on the path so they have a stronger footing um you know we're programmed to look at for everything all the answers outside of ourselves that's what we're programmed to do so you know we're breaking we're breaking through the, that programming there are plenty of rainbows and in, in unicorns in your present moment you don't have to go too far in the future to see them and if you're able to really uh commit to taking action um, to find out who you are on all levels, you kind of have to rewind a little bit. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of like when you're in business and a project just doesn't work out. What do you do? The saying is we go back to the drawing board and we look at everything again and we try to uh, establish a stronger footing so that this doesn't occur again, right? So, you know, that's what we have to do in our life. So you know, we are a 24 hour seven surveillance camera, whether we're aware of it or not aware of it, whether we remember something fully or don't remember something fully, it's all stored in there. And so, so you know, if people don't want to go back lifetimes, I tell them lifetime to you could be two weeks ago, could be two months ago, could be 20 years ago, who gives a crap? Are you willing to sit down and really trust a practitioner to help you get into a calm space Mm -hmm. And let's sift through and spirit will bring through what's important to you now. And so I do see that a lot, but in order to get to your future, you know, that's like, that's like, um, playing a board game and just going straight to I'm finished. I'm done. I won exactly. or I, I'm finished. And it's like where you missed all of the interactions and relationships Mm -hmm. to the board and you and to the people that you're playing with right so whether you, you finished or not it's it's the 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 feelings that are developed through that and that's really what we're being taught to do is to tap back into the feelings and to get out of just the thought right right and then we're also taught to program that the thought and the feeling are different because the feelings really come from the emotional body and so why do certain feelings trigger us more than others and and we get to a point in our life, especially older, it, it's like, I can see a pattern that I have sabotaged this, or I'm not sure what's happening. I've done everything right. And I don't understand. I need someone to get their crystal ball out, play their cards and tell me what's happening moving forward. When the answer is no, no, let's bring it back to present moment. Let's connect with the breath. And then let's get in here and let's, let's do a little bit of a rewind. Mm -hmm. and a releasing because 
you know, we're adults, right? And we can look back at something that we might have been so pissed at our mother or father for doing at the time. But if you were to be able to go back and hover above that situation, listen to what is happening, you'll probably come out of there with a completely different perspective, feeling, absolutely whatever. And then what happens with that? Wow, I carried that around. I didn't even, I didn't even know I really had that much resistance. And all those things that create the resistance and the blockages don't allow for a full relationship Yes. with others through being in fullness of yourself. Yeah, and what I find works for me is when I'm with my clients and an issue comes up, I try to have them understand that whatever happened, that it was meant to be because we agreed to come here to learn to grow as souls. And I try to bring, like you, bring them back into the situation, but I also bring them to the attention that if something happened to them as a child, their memory of that event is childlike. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say childish because that's not mm -hmm. the right word, mm -hmm. Char childlike. So now when they go back as the parent, the, the woman or the father or the man they are today, they can go back and look at that as an adult. And like you said, to sit there and observe the situation. And now that you're an adult with life experience, how much different would you have done things, you know? And I also bring to their attention that their parents are human beings or the, the boss or whatever happened, they're human beings and they make mistakes as well. And if those parents or those people never resolve their issues, they're acting in childish ways because they didn't use their deeper soul perspective of the healing process that would bring them to this adult perspective looking back. So once you do that, I find a lot of the clients kind of, oh, yeah, you're right. I never looked at it that way because that forces them to get out of that victim mentality, an observer, and someone who's proactive to do something about it. And my formula is very simple look at the hurt observe it forgive it heal from it and move forward and the first hurt is always the hardest because it's the first one that is prominent and then it's the hardest to observe it independently to heal from it to forgive yourself and the person or situation that may have hurt you to prepare you to move forward mm -hmm. but i guarantee you after you do this three to five times, you snap your fingers, you fall into that stop, drop, and go kind of attitude. You, 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 you go back, you observe, you heal, you forgive, and you move forward. And once you know that formula, it goes woof. And I find you can see the energies even in the clients. When they listen to the new perspective, you can almost see they change their body posture and I could almost see their energy changing, their mm -hmm. facial expression, the awareness, and the gratitude they feel that they have had this aha moment that is life changing. And I find that helps them tremendously to move forward. But I always warn them, when you think you've done it and it's all safe to go on with your life, the universe is going to test you. Mm -hmm. So they're going to bring you another person, another situation, and to see how you react. And that's when you've got to be very conscious, especially when you're going through that learning process, where you have to stop and take a deep breath and observe and go through that formula faster. And the minute you do it, chances are you've passed the exam, you're moving on to the next level. Mm -hmm. And it's so much fun to see, but then our life experience is that once you've done that, there's another lesson. So it's like an onion that keeps peeling and peeling and peeling. But you know what? As it peels, I find that the outer layers are dark. So imagine a dark onion. And then as you peel them, the peels get lighter and lighter. So I found with my clients, the most difficult issues always surface first. Yes. Because they're the ones that carry us and drag us down the most. It's the ones that keep coming up and we keep pushing back. Keep coming up, we keep pushing back. 
But the minute you decide, okay, I'm not going to push it, I'm going to face it, everything else that trickles after is a lot lighter. And that's why it becomes easier to go through my little formula where you look at the situation, you observe it, you, heal, uh, you, you forgive, you heal and move forward. It gets easier because the layers are smaller and lighter. And that kind of goes with your spirit. So as you get closer to the center of the, the, the onion, it's where your soul resides with all of its glory and of its light. So the more you peel out, the closer you get to who your essence is and you become calmer as a person moving forward. Well, I, I agree with you 100%. And, you know, if you want to use the onion analogy, you know, the, 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 as the onion, onion's growing, it's getting weathered. So as it's getting weathered, it's having more protection on it. And every, every layer of the onion's having another layer layer of protection on it and the protection becomes very very comfortable yes. so you once you start peeling that away you're getting to serious raw vulnerability and nobody knows really quite what to do with those kinds of feelings so you don't jump straight into that you've got to get the the layers of this weathered protection mm -hmm. that we have voluntarily and involuntarily placed upon ourselves so it's our responsibility to make that decision are we going to stop drop sit connect with the breath and take action mm -hmm. or are we going to be reckless and continue with well if i take my hands off the steering wheel going 80 you know it's just meant to be i'll hit the guardrail but what else are you going to hit on the way out you know what i mean yes. or you can make changes so that you're not being reckless and you're because energy is sacred and we've been taught almost to hide from it to a point where it's uh it's painful to go through and as you and i know in, in our work um it it can sometimes you know it could be a mini sandstorm and then it could be like holy moly uh, i've i'm triggered everywhere um and i i i really love working one-on-one -on -one with people Mm -hmm. But I have really been loving doing the Zoom because someone's in the comfort of their own home. And so I will ask the client to just stay still after we're off and just be with that energy and let what bubbles up bubble up, you know. Mm -hmm. And each time it, it, I can't say that it gets easier, it gets different. Each time mm -hmm. gets different until all of a sudden you have this feeling of, feel totally different it's just like you know wearing these things right? right i'm still having people i know i prefer to have it on <laughs> you know especially the little ones and i work with kids so i i want to have it on i i like it on and i've had grown adults say i prefer to have it on you know and they don't they don't know what it felt like not to have it on but they forget to go back to before they had to wear it right correct so didn't need to become Become an appendage. These heavy blankets that we put on ourselves for protection stuff our emotions into places where we're either going to implode in a very reckless way, mm -hmm. or we're going to have meltdowns, or we're just going to continue to we just have fatigue and exhaustion and frustration, which is admitting that I'm freaking unhappy. Yes, I am not in the right relationships. There's nothing in control under my domestic home, my job, my demographics, whatever it may be. And so we're all here now to sort of support each other exactly. to say, being unhappy is okay. Because step one saying, my life freaking sucks. I, I have chosen the wrong partner, but I feel like I can't get out of it. You know, or I, I have relationships with my kids that are grown. I, I can't get out of it. Well, you can. You can detach, you can become more within yourself and understand things with different light on situations that have gotten you to where that you are. And the key is wake up to where you are, figure out how you got here. And then and before you start taking a whole bunch of steps forward and reaching out of yourself and calling someone like me or you, Zita, right. hey, what's my future? Well, my future tells you sit your ass down in that chair and let's start getting some work done and deal with being able to sit still with yourself, which is difficult for most people. 
They don't know how to do that. They think sitting still has a remote control in its hand or music or, you know, and our, our kids are just constantly have to have something, something. Exactly. So they're all security blankets to hide um, deep wounds from, from, from wherever deep wounds and those wounds have different levels and different layers. So yes, you are correct. One can go and then a lesson will be like, I, my guides laugh at me all the time. They're like, uh-huh. I can hear them. Exactly. She thinks she got this. Exactly. Oh, hold on a second. Boom. And then it's like, did she pass it? <laughs> did she pass the test or did she fail? And, and I talk to them just like I'm talking to you. I'm like, I, I know what you're doing. Yes. Watch how well I do it this way, you know? And other times I'm like, oh my gosh, that caught me off guard. I, I stunk. I didn't react very well. I didn't even respond very well, which is why I always go back to get your butt into the present moment and hear, see, sense, smell, feel all of what is around you. Everything of it, everything, good, bad, and different. I don't like labels. Just feel it. And then you'll feel your body vibrating, right? Exactly. And then you're going to feel, I can actually hear my heart. I can hear things from way over there. I can feel, sense. I could taste that, taste it different. Stay in your present moment. Yeah. And, I, and learn to be there, I think, is the, the, the big key to step number one. Yeah, yeah. I, I find that um, acknowledging you're not perfect would be I, I, I can't stand that saying, a lot of people. I'm sorry. I, I can't stand that saying of like, I'm not perfect. My world's not perfect. It's perfect is the way you choose it to be, but let it be what you chose it to be. Exactly. Don't let it be what everybody else has placed upon you exactly. of what that is. That's like when you're a teenager, you're like, I cannot wait to get out of this house and get away from my parents. And I'm going to do this and I'm never going to do that to my kids and blah, 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 blah. And then what do you do? You become a creature of habit. Exactly. You might rebel a little bit, but then you realize, ah, I didn't have it so bad there. Mm -hmm. And then you begin to create pretty much what they've done. And then you realize you're reacting and doing things in the way that the behavior was taught to you that you've placed in your subconscious, right? Yep. Now becomes conscious. Exactly. And so that's the way you're living your life until you wake the frick up and say, oh, I don't want to sound like that or be like that. I actually don't like the way this room has been designed. I don't like my clothes. I don't like anything. So just to be able to step forward and say, I got to change it all, but change it in a constructive way, Absolutely. not in a way of I'm rebelling and resisting everything that got me here because every single moment is a lesson. Absolutely. If you're not in that moment, you don't know what that lesson really is. And so what could happen tomorrow and the next day based on not being present might not have been for your highest good. Exactly. So I think it's a real important topic that you brought up, Rita, because we're both getting these in our practice while we're also experiencing them. And being in that moment means I control of this moment and this moment sets me up for the next moment. Now I've lived my life like this. I have preach this for decades to my kids, to clients, um, to classes I've taken and, and classes I've given is until I know what my moment is, I'm not, I'm not going to make decisions for my next moment. And you know, that saying about, oh, you know, we're the butterfly, we're the caterpillar, we've gone into the thing, we're going to go into chrysalis, we're going to fall apart, blah, 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 blah. And it was, so I think about 2017, I think I've gone through this transformation a number of times in this many decades that I've been on this earth. And someone said, so where are you? You know, I'm out. I'm out. I said, well, I'm out. Well, where did you go? And I said, I'm just perched on my chrysalis. I'm perched on my little nest. I'm actually looking around at availability and what I want to do before I just take off. Yes. And that's where I was, you know, four or five years ago. So it's, it, in the last two years I haven't taught us one thing. So we have no control over a lot of things. Correct. So once we learn that we have control over ourselves and it starts with us, 
then we begin to incorporate the changes that we need to make our next moment and our next moment for the highest good. And yes, I'm saying everybody needs to practice it, but you need to reach out to like Rita, myself, other people that are doing this from the heart center. You know, we're doing this from the heart center to help all of you get to a path because that helps all of us be better people. Absolutely. This isn't just about my success or your success or someone else's success and how many viewers we have and how many clients we have and what our bank accounts look like. That's freaking irrelevant to me. Yeah. When, and when, I, when, when somebody gets something on their own, I'm just like, I'm behind the scenes like, Yes, when you see that one more aha baby, moment. one yeah. more. Yeah, when you see that aha moment in their eyes and that realization that they got it, like it just clicked, right? Yeah. So that piece in that puzzle kind of snapped in before you kind of see them trying to squeeze it and make a, a life. But the minute they learned a lesson, the piece just snaps in and another one pops out, <laughs> and that's the, their next little chest move, the next little piece they need to work on. And when they realize that they're in charge and in control to some degree to manage their reactions and plan accordingly to what they want to live or how they want to live, with whom they want to live, where they want to live, then they can progress in their life. But if they always have this victim mentality saying, well, I don't fit in, the piece doesn't snap in, what's wrong? What's wrong with them? what's wrong with my boss or my environment or my city when they realize it's not the weather that's going to stop you because if it's raining outside there's nothing you can do about the rain or the snowstorm but you can decide to put on your raincoat rain boots and still go for a walk right so that's how you empower yourself you made the conscious decision things outside of you be it weather or people or environments or situations they're going to happen regardless but we need to find that raincoat or that winter coat to to cover ourselves and weather the storm, if you will, and then go out there and face the world. Because where I live, especially, we have to wear a coat for six months. And if you don't want to wear a coat, you can't move to Canada because that's the reality. If you want to be in Santa, well, you guys, oh, you froze for a second. Are, am I okay now? No, you're fine now. Oh, okay. I was just you're fine. You're, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, uh, so coats and sandals, you know, but the, author, the other thing we need to address too, is it's not just, you know, weathering, you know, the physical aspects of the climate. It's also the emotional aspects. And I mean, Absolutely. just where you were, you just had the whole trucker gone boy. Exactly. I'm DC. I just had it all. I didn't let a thing about it phase me one way or the other. I just embraced it for the highest good. And that, when, when I say that, because people use that way too often. The highest good to me is harmony and balance. Mm. Harmony and balance to the best of the ability for stability within that person or the life or the, the basic demographics of whatever, of the collective. Um, so that's what I mean by the highest good. So, you know, I didn't even, I just, you know, we have to look at all of the emotional stuff that's coming with the baggage that everybody else has. You know, and everyone's looking for the secret information. Everyone's trying to go through, you know, wormholes and and portals and 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 all these channels. Listening to people that have are many of them I've seen straight through them for a long time are are you know they're getting paid on the back page and uh, they're getting their information that you think is the right information when you're looking so far out of yourself instead of getting the information from within yourself. And again, that goes right back to what we started with people that just want to know what's going to happen to them in the future. Yeah. You're not, the future is yours to design, but if right. you don't stop, drop, sit and stay in this moment and really, really get your feelers up and understand that being an empathic means you are filtering information through every sensory every physical sensory and you're learning your spiritual sensories, right? Mm -hmm. But you got to master how to master you hone your skill, you practice. And so in doing that, your choices for tonight and tomorrow and moving forward might be built completely differently. Absolutely. And then if you get along that path and you find, eh, I feel like maybe if I turn left, it would be a little bit better. Well, turn left. Because your whole guide team is with you saying, 
okay, well, all right, let's present this, let's present that. And you have the option of going, mm, no, oh yes, oh no. So again, this isn't for the faint of heart. No. This kind of work means I'm dedicated. I want to do this. I want to be the best spiritual being in this human physical avatar that functions and must it, it you cannot your spirit cannot live right now at this time frame without this physical avatar yes. so start taking care of it and so your emotional body affects your physical avatar it affects everything I your soul see. is not outside of you it is com it's literally like a computer source taking everything in and your spirits out there being the the scout so to speak right. you know getting all the life lessons and so, you know, if you fall off a horse and you can't get back up and get on it, figure out why, yeah. you know, if you need to sit in a pool of tears, sit in a pool of tears, and figure out how to move forward. Well, the crying and is don't actually, hesitate to ask for help. Exactly. The crying is actually really good. Yes. Yeah. Because it kind of clears the soul in some way, because you realize the emotion came up and Another thing I suggest to my clients is to be patient with themselves yeah. and give themselves time to absorb the new information. Because that's something I had to learn. It's like, okay, I know what the problem is. I'm going to resolve it. I'll do my little formula, fix it. Boom, it's done. And tomorrow is a new day. No, it doesn't work that way. It takes time because we, even when you pray, you meditate or, or whatever method you do it, it, it took years for you to come to that point to be conscious of what is it that's holding you back. It's not going to stop holding you back the next day just because you've done a few things. Mm -hmm. It's your whole soul is kind of like pulling away from the avatar and you're kind of like, going, oh, this is a lot of work. There's a lot of baggage there. Let me go back and reassess it. Maybe I missed something. Mm -hmm. Let me think about it. Give me another week or two. To and let me process that information again. And that's what worked for me. And when you plunge into that activity, that scenario, and you analyze it as an observer and not as a participant, you see it from both sides, right? If someone hurts you or the situation was difficult, put yourself into the situation or the other person's feet, and then you observe with different glasses, different perspective. Yeah. So I always encourage my clients to have patience. It's something I strive because I'm a Sagittarius. So I'm more of a fire sign. So let's go, let's move, let's get this done like yesterday. But I tried that and it didn't work. I mean, you can try it, our clients can try it, but you know, <laughs> that's okay. You know, we've got to find what works for us. And the only way to do that is, you know, sometimes it's baptism through fire and sometimes it's getting your toe hot and sometimes it's getting your toe cold and sometimes it's just this and sometimes it's just that. It's all a lesson. There is no right and wrong way. There is no success and failure. It's a lesson. Exactly. So, and it's how you, how you want to work with it yourself and not worry about what other people think, see, sense, and feel about you mm -hmm. because the approval ratings are going out out the door we're having all new approval ratings coming in and those are the ones you set for yourself exactly right so are you yes. five star are you one star where are you in your steps you know that's really what it all and sometimes you have to go back to ground zero um and start looking at those things and know that it's a gradual process and you know um you were saying something about uh you know, depression and anxiety and all kinds of things. We are on an emotional roller coaster and sometimes it can feel like that. But, you know, what the symptom board was created for quick fixes and fixes that other people wanted you in. But there are some that have chemical imbalances. I totally get that. I understand that. I've worked with a lot of people like that. I've, I've experienced that with other people. I feel pretty good about being balanced. But I will experience those highs and, and lows sometimes. And just a week ago when the energy was changing, literally you're accepted, you're not accepted. Oh yes, oh yes, this was all this was going on. And I, it left me you know, with tears, sharing, shedding tears at night and I'm not a crier. So it, it, some people could take it as, oh, woe is me, this is just too much. I just need to have a physical you know, release of tears. That's great, but I also knew that it was it was just a response to so much coming into the nervous system. 
Yes. That there wasn't an, enough downtime to allow my a, a reboot, you know, or a process mm -hmm. between each synopsis of information that was coming in through my physical avatar. It was yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Okay, oh, no, blah, blah. And, then it, and this was also happening with clients. The other thing I want to bring up is something that you just mentioned, and that is what we are experiencing. So yeah. we are literally walking this walk, right? So in order to become better as Zeta and as Sandra, we're walking through the same kind of fires that we're working with our clients with, right? Yes. We're not, we're not going out and getting a degree and then saying, okay, it would be like, okay, they're showing me this. I go out and I get extensive degrees in financial planning. And then you come to me with all your money and I'm like, I, I, you know, you should be doing this and you should be doing that. What, who's saying that? My firm is telling me that exactly. because you need, they need X amount of money in this account, X amount exactly. of money. There. So you get them to do that because then you're going to get this little commission, right? right? But then my finances are like all in one little savings account. What kind of an example am I to asking you to invest your money when I haven't invested mine? Yeah. You know, it, it's like you wouldn't go to, um, a, a, a bariatric doctor, you know, and say, I, I'm, I'm having weight issues and so on. And they don't test all the things for you. And then you look at them and, and they're way overweight and they haven't been tested. And they're telling you, you need to do this, this and that, but they're not walking that walk. So how long are you going to stay with people who are not prime examples yeah. of, of God's love? And I use that word lightly because God just encompasses a lot of things. It's just, it's a word that I couldn't even say for three decades because religion has, has nothing to do with anything. And I think when we say, God, we have shrunk, we have shrunk prime creator source of all that is within ourselves, because we're looking at something that's so big outside of ourselves when every spark is within every part of ourselves. Absolutely. And so we have to turn it back around and say, you know what? I fell four times. I fell down. I did this. I did that. Uh, I hear you're having some, some of the same things. But, and then spirit will tell me what might work for you it might not be exactly what worked for me. So, you know, all my life, people have come to me for advice. And my thing is, I don't give advice. I might suggest maybe what I would do, but I cannot give you advice. So we're not sitting here with degrees. And I mean, my sign says, keep it simple because that's how it should be. Um, but we're walking, living, breathing examples of how to get people into the now moment go backwards, go forward, go backwards, go forward, get back in the now moment and to support each other in the next step of life because it isn't just about you. It's exactly. about all the people that contracted to come in to be with you. Mm -hmm. um, and it's so much bigger than you and your ball of tears and your BS that you want to play in and your BS might last a couple decades. Enough. Wipe, wipe your butt. Wait, blow your nose, sit down, make a decision to move forward with your life. That's how I feel about it. And, I, and I'm one of these, keep it simple. I don't need a lot of hugs and kisses. Just let's just get going and get you to where you need to be. Yeah. It's funny. You where, brought you, up that. where you want to be, where it would feel good to you. Yeah. I loved your example about the finance because I actually have a finance degree and I worked in the financial industry. So I, I, I know everything about me. Maybe that's why they gave me that example. <laughs> I had no idea. But, <laughs> okay. But what I'm going to do, yeah. The thing is, yeah. your example was fantastic because because I've worked in that industry, I know everything about the legal aspects and creating financial products, the risks, the rewards, um, and I know the details of the products. I have all kinds of licenses to trade futures and options, Canada, United States, and I. I can do all those things and people know that around me. So they come to me for advice and I say, no, I'm sorry. I can't, I will not give people personal financial advice because I know them well enough to know that if I give them information, they're going to take it. And if it doesn't work out, they're going to blame me. Sure. So I said, listen, here's information on stocks and bonds and gold and silver and this and that and do your homework get out there do research oh you know it's too much information for me well if it's too hard for you to do some homework you shouldn't be investing in those products because 
when they fail, who are you going to blame? You're not going to blame yourself. You're going to blame me or who's giving you advice. So even though you do have a financial advisor or an insurance provider or whomever this person is, they give you information and advice. Do your homework before you invest because your example was spot on. They work for a corporation. The corporation says, Zita, I want 10% in bonds, 10% in gold, and 80% in these stocks, be it small caps or large caps. So you're sitting at the front desk and you have a sales objective for the year. And if you don't match it, they let you go, whereas your clients suffer, right? So regardless of the situation or the example, do your homework, right? Yeah. You know, if you're gonna go see a doctor, make sure when you see this person, they give you sound advice. And if you don't like what they tell you, don't accept it just because they're a doctor or a lawyer or whoever, get a second opinion, right? How many times do you hear that get another opinion? Or do more research on your own. I know doctors and lawyers hate it when you Google, but you know what? When you walk into that office a little better informed before you meet them, they can't give you that pill for potentially um, illness you have because you know your body, like you said earlier. Yeah. I know who I am. And, you know, especially if a male doctor and a female, and I know how I'm feeling, he can't, right? Because he's not in our body, first of all. And second of all, he's not our sex. So it's always great to do the research. Be informed, be smarter than you were when you woke up this morning. It doesn't, it doesn't mean you have to invest hours and hours and hours, but if you choose to, why not? You're smarter, you're taking care of yourself, you're taking care of your finances, your family, your life. And you can't cover all grounds because there's things that are gonna happen. There could be an international financial crisis that every stock market's gonna crash. So it doesn't matter how well diversified you are, everything's going to crash and i've seen that many times so you need to be aware of the risks and rewards and what are you prepared to accept and not accept and in the end maybe you should not invest and go on a vacation right whatever works for you you got to figure out yeah, your but, you know, formula yeah but the biggest investments within yourself Exactly. This is all you got. This is all you exactly. got is your spirit within your physical avatar. And you can't be anything to anybody else if you don't freaking line that up and get it going and know that you are everything and all that there is within the prime force, the prime source creator of original source. And that all this other stuff is a whole bunch of minutia. It's all the layers and levels on top of that pure original source cube of that little onion in the middle of there that's vulnerable, right? Yes. And so Absolutely. we have to take responsibility for, for this and we can't continue to follow mainstream and what's, you know, I, I, when I worked for physicians back in the eighties, I was with OBGYN and I remember uh, I worked for six, fem six male doctors, one female, she had the toughest time. And I got a phone call from a client who was having the third baby morning sickness. And I go in the back room and Dr. So-and-so, so-and-so is called and um, experiencing a lot of morning sickness. It's been about 72 hours, can't even hold down uh, tea. And he goes, well, you know, that's all in their head, right? And <laughs> wow. I'm such a smart ass. I just looked at him and I knew I wasn't insane. And I had morning sickness for four months with my first one. And, and I just looked at him and I said, yeah, well, why don't you get pregnant and try having a baby and then come to me and tell me about your morning sickness. And so I just literally stood there with the script pad and I said, what am I giving her? <laughs> you know, yeah. and I said, and by the way, is it okay if I tell her to have some saltines and some ginger tea? Well, yeah, that helps. Because <laughs> a lot of people just, you know, I'm just saying we have to stop listening to all this stuff everybody else is saying and doing and, and also be aware of those who are out there who are preaching stuff that aren't living it or they're, they're preaching it because they have a link below for you to buy what it is exactly. that they're telling you. It so, is. you know, snake oil, snake venom whatever it may be that people have got out there that they're selling and doing and gold, silver, crypto, whatever. I just, I have a, so many people that are falling into all of that. And that's that, that's on them, not me, right? Exactly. Hey, you go get what you want. If you're called to do that, you do what you want to do. You want to buy a fur coat in the middle of 120 degree weather and wear it, go for it. Gosh, you got to wear it. I'll just look at you and be like, okay, but we have to go back to our own original source and know that we're fully connected and we have to be responsible mm -hmm. for each and every decision. And if you want to make the best choices in each and every moment, 
you've got to be in the present. And when I say present, I kept looking around for like something like, because it's a gift. Anything outside of what's right here, right now. If you knew, if I knew, I could say something right now that could set you back or hurt or hurt you in any way. I've gone against my sacred law of do no harm. Mm -hmm. So if I have a thought and it might not be the, the best interest of the other person, I will talk to my spirit guides. Is that me or is that the egoic side wanting to say something right there? And so I don't want to reach out and bite somebody because I'm not in my own present moment. Mm -hmm. Because if I reach out and say something that is could be harmful or detrimental to someone. And then of course we know the chain reaction from all of that, right? Mm -hmm. It is my responsibility to be in my present moment to think of my thoughts, to think of how does it match, to have a dialogue with my higher self, which is me, to know that is what I'm about to say, think, or feel, is that kind and compassionate, right? Mm -hmm. And, or is it gonna be constructive, you know? Or is it just best to let that person learn their own lesson through their own choices? And almost nine and a half times out of 10, I'm going with the last one. Yes. It's best to just let them do what they need to do, Yeah. period. What I like to do if I can, I try to give the, them information and guide them, and then I let them go. Just to try to change the trajectory just a little bit and offer guidance and let them go. If they go back, or they may go this way, that's up to them. But if they choose to move forward, they will, and they'll change their life. It's up to them. Well, we have to look at, we have to protect each other. Absolutely. We have to protect each other. So we all have our, our inner child. We all have our, you know, many different versions of ourselves that we're walking around with under this hood, this, this physical hood. And uh, I want my hood to be all good. Yeah. And, you know, I have a saying, keep it good in the hood. Um, and, I, and I want your hood to be good. And I, I don't want to create something that would taint that in any, in any way, shape, or form. I don't want to create karma I've got to pay for later because I wasn't in my present moment mm -hmm. mulling well, things over. So tell me a little bit about what services you offer everybody. Yeah. Well, I was just going to offer doing an Oracle card reading. I okay. thought this might be apropos to, since we talked a lot about souls and coaching. So this is something that I use. One of the tools I use are Oracle cards. I use crystals meditation, healing runes. So I usually get the deck and I knock it. And so what I'll do for us today and for our viewers- Is anybody is, home? <laughs> well, actually by knocking it, that was funny. It's get rid of any previous energy that may have I been- okay. I, I do cards too. And I'm just like, oh, oh wow, sorry. anybody home today? Yeah. That's so funny. It's funny because originally I was gonna do, a, oh, wow. It's always really, really, always apropos. So there's two cards that fell. And the first one that fell is called Beginnings. I cherish all the cycles in my life. And the second one is called Wisdom. All I truly need is within me. Isn't that amazing? We just discussed that. I'm not sure how it's going to resonate. So the, whenever you want to start a new beginning, you're willing to do the change and do the work. You're ready to grow into that tree and create your new branches and you have the wisdom within like we've been saying we have the wisdom to effect the change to grow our trees in the orchard we want how we beautiful do. is that Isn't that, that is awesome and the funny thing is i pulled a card oh, before we got on and and my card was uh the well it, it went flying out underneath my desk but it's um divine blueprint can beautiful. you see that yes Okay, so basically, this is this is telling you that um, uh, you know, it's more simple than you think, and that God would not make things difficult for you, and that if you tap into the naturalness of your divine blueprint, everything is in your heart. Every every bit of information that you need is 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 it's right there. Wow. You know, it's it's just it's all there. So those were just three divine cards that that just that came out. I don't do them 
all the time. I only do it when I'm called to do it. So, I mean, I know that for you, like in your sessions, you also, you know, I call it a toolbox because it's like yes. someone comes to you and you're like, okay, well, okay. I'm being called to grab the cards or I'm being called to grab the pendulum. I'm being right. called to go into meditation with this person. Um, I'm being called to write this down before I talk to them. So we have so many different tools in our toolboxes that are, I, I call them, it's, it's custom blended for the, each individual person. Absolutely. And so, you know, that's what you and I both offer in our, in our services. So if anyone's looking to just, in, to become, to become who you really are, authentically, who you really are, these sessions are very beneficial. Absolutely. And, you know, you'll start somewhere, you may flip to somebody else, you're going to resonate with so many different people. But I always caution, just keep it in the moment, keep it within yourself, wait for the answers. You know, patients you brought up earlier, and the interesting thing about that is, uh, you know, if I owned a store of patients, I would have, you know, pay, I would just pay the gold, I, I paid gold everywhere I went, because, you know, it's something that's not sold, it's something that you have to really develop within yourself, so, you know, I always joke around, I went to the store, and the, the aisle of patients was empty, and I'm like, damn it, you know, <laughs> like, damn it, there was no patients in the pickle aisle, you know, it's like, what is that? <laughs> so we do. And again, it's that instant gratification. It's that pre-programming. It's so many different things that have created a disconnection between you and your God source. Yes. And so we're, you know, we're not taking our power back, so to speak. We're shedding off all the layers that disguised our power as being outside of us. That's what they just said and came through me. Yes. Yeah, I agree. So I guess with that, we can probably use this as an opportunity to tell our clients that we'll put our description to our websites and products and services mm -hmm. in the description below. We encourage you to like and subscribe to help the channels grow because the yes. more we grow, more we can share with other people our messages and the more people we can help. Yes. Yes. And I, I, uh, I echo that, sister. I echo okay. that. And this is, this been has been so very wonderful. enjoyable, very enjoyable. I, and I hope everybody enjoy. enjoys it. There was such a pleasant conversation. Oh my goodness. Me too. To I enjoyed this very much. We'll do Me this too. Again. Thank Talk you, us. everybody. Thank you. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye. Okay.